In this video, you will learn how to adjust your settings and don't starve together to help you learn the game faster, keep you from dying, or improve your gameplay. To begin with, the first thing you can do to help you learn the game is when you start a new world, set your game mode to endless. Having an endless world, especially when playing multiplayer, helps you to prevent having to restart the entire world when somebody dies and allows you to not have to waste time making telltale hearts or life-giving amulets to revive your friends. It also eliminates having to rely heavily on touchstones. Making a world endless means you are able to revive on the florid postern until you learn enough to stay alive continuously. However, with these upcoming tips, you will probably not have to worry about dying at all. The next thing you can do is you will want to come to the forest tab and down on the world settings you will be able to adjust the amount of resources and mobs and the speed that those resources and mobs respawn. For this tab, I recommend visiting your compendium and checking the things you die the most to and adjusting them. For example, big problems players have like shadow creatures and hound waves both can be adjusted in this tab. Now, although you can set these to none, I recommend simply moving them to little so you will still have to learn to deal with them and since these mobs provide valuable resources like teeth and nightmare fuel. Once you decide what you want in your world, you can move on to how you want your world made in the world generation tab. One of the most important settings you can adjust is the size of your world. A lot of times, players who die during or before winter do so because they are not prepared and this is not because they don't know what to do but simply because they run out of time to get things ready. And in a game where time is so valuable, you want to make sure you spend as little time walking around lost. Therefore, making a world smaller can help you find everything you need sooner and give you more time to set up farms and stock up on food. In this tab, you can also increase the amount of food sources like carrots and berry bushes, so make sure you take these into account. And in case you have a problem with food, you can check out my other video on not starving. Now that you have decided everything you want in your overworld, you can move on to the caves. Here you can adjust depth worm attacks, plumunkies, and dangling depth dwellers, as well as making the caves smaller, just like the overworld. By reducing these game elements, exploring caves and ruins becomes a lot more manageable and you reduce the risk of dying since dangling depth dwellers become more abundant the deeper you go into caves and shadow splum monkeys are some of the hardest mobs to deal with in packs. You can also increase friendly mobs like bunnymen and rock lobsters to help you around, just be careful with meat. Once you have your world tailored to your preference and are ready to go at it, make sure you take a look at your actual game settings. Here you can adjust how you play and view the game and can remove things like screen shake caused by earthquakes and bosses that limit your visibility as well as lag compensation which makes kiting impossible. If your game happens to lag a lot, then you can reduce the game refresh rates and other settings to help improve your experience and to have the game run as smooth as possible. Overall, adjusting your settings can help you in so many ways that it's almost a disadvantage to not mess around with them and find what works with you. Make sure you like this video if you found it helpful and subscribe for more content. Also comment any tips you have to help a fellow starver.